There are many pieces to the cancer puzzle. Each patient we see has a unique and distinct puzzle. These pieces of the puzzle include lots of things. They include patient history, family history, whether or not there's a clear understanding of the diagnosis. Here at the Ackerman Cancer Center, a real strength of our practice is our ability and our desire to put all the pieces of your puzzle together. We bring the whole picture together, and for you, this picture will be clear and will be in focus. Our board certified oncologists and our oncology trained support staff, including our physicists, our nurses, our social workers, and our dietitians, are all here to put this puzzle together. We all work towards your cancer treatment plan to put you on the path to wellness. At the Ackerman Cancer Center, we're committed to taking patients from diagnosis to survivorship. We are here to provide high quality, state-of-the-art, focused radiation treatment for our cancer patients. Radiation therapy is the use of ionizing radiation to control the abnormal growth of cells, whether they're malignant or benign. Radiation works against cancer by two methods. Physically, it goes in and attacks the cells directly. Each cell is like a small factory. You have this conveyor belt, which is really the DNA. So the radiation goes in and will actually blow holes in that conveyor belt, making that cell inactive. A second way that it works is chemically. Radiation goes in and interrupts the chemical bonds in water and oxygen. Some patients will come and see me and they only need to have surgery or they need to have surgery and chemotherapy or sometimes they'll need all three or sometimes radiation therapy alone. How it's sequenced depends on the kind of a malignancy. Thyroid cancer or benign thyroid disease often sees a radiation oncologist. There are two main types of diseases. You have thyroid cancer and Graves disease is another term that's used when the gland is hyperactive. So we're first gonna talk about what happens if you have a hyperactive gland. So in hyperthyroidism or Graves' disease, the thyroid's making too much thyroid hormone. There are medicines that can be used to try to bring that uh, hyperactivity down, but sometimes they have side effects or problems. The patient can't tolerate it. So instead we give a patient radioactive iodine. It's called I-131, it's a special isotope. It's just a simple pill that's swallowed. Your body cannot tell the difference between normal iodine which you consume daily in iodized salt, seafood and other things, or a radiation pill that's radioactive iodine. It gets absorbed, circulates throughout the system, and then concentrates into the thyroid, which loves any kind of iodine. That radioactive iodine concentrates in the area of the thyroid. It then emanates out just small distances out to the tissue within the thyroid, and then it causes that thyroid to either become inactive for some of those thyroid cells will die off, thus making the thyroid no longer active and making thyroid hormone. In the same way, if a person has thyroid cancer, the surgeon goes in, removes the entire thyroid, but he can't take it all out. There are little teeny roots that stick out just from where he takes the thyroid out. We need to go after those areas, and so we give radioactive iodine, again circulates throughout the body, it seeks out and finds any of the remaining thyroid tissue, whether normal or malignant. It then gets taken up into that tissue, any excess radioactive iodine that's absorbed. It then gets uh, secreted out, just concentrating just here, and it kills all the remaining thyroid. When we first meet a patient for consultation, a number of things happen. First, the patient and their family meets with one of our oncology certified nurses. The nurse finds out about the patient's past medical history, medications, and the nurse also provides some education about the process of cancer treatment. The patient and their family then meet with one of our physicians. Our role as physicians is to better understand your cancer diagnosis. Generally, we call up right in front of our patients the other physicians that are involved in the patient's care, and we work to lead a collaborative team of other physicians and ourselves in providing the best care for our patients. Prior to receiving radioactive iodine, you'll be asked to follow a low iodine diet. Your nurse will provide you with a written copy of an easy to follow diet 
to prepare and enhance the effectiveness of the radioactive iodine we'll be administering. This diet is only until you actually receive your radioactive iodine. Once it's complete, you can go back to your normal eating routine. For the radioactive iodine therapy, we take you into a room and sit you down. The physician comes in and he gives you the pill, and the only real instruction is, is that we ask that you don't put it in your hand to then swallow it. You just tip it straight from the pill container into your mouth, and you can drink it with water. Something I always tell patients, that it's the size of a Tylenol capsule, so it's not very large. When you've taken your iodine-131, there's three basic rules for radiation safety and that's time, distance, and shielding. You wanna minimize the amount of time that you're spending with any of your family members or people of the general public. You wanna maximize the distance from your family members. And for shielding, it'd be best if you can stay in a different room than your family members. The walls will, will act as a natural shielding um, from the other patients. It's extremely important for you to follow these precautions because we wanna minimize the amount of radiation that your family members are gonna get exposed to. So by following these instructions, we're going to minimize the amount of dose that they're going to receive from you. Side effects of radioactive iodine depend on whether you're getting a lower dose or a higher dose. The dose that will be recommended for you depends on your diagnosis. Patients receiving a high dose of radioactive iodine may experience a sore throat, and some people report some nausea. Side effects from a lower dose are fairly mild. Some people experience a mild sore throat that's easily managed with over-the-counter pain medications. And you may experience some mild tenderness in the salivary glands. If this should happen, please report it to your doctor and we'll prescribe a medication if necessary. Here at the Ackerman Cancer Center, we have a whole host of support services for our patients. It really is one of the strengths of our practice. I have found that support services are very integral to the delivery of cancer care for our patients. The services that our nurses, social workers, and dietitians provide improves the quality of life for our patients through treatment. An oncology social worker is here to provide cancer patients with psychosocial services and various resources within the community, um, nationally, internationally, for anything that they may find that they need throughout their treatment. I meet with every new patient who comes in and am able to assess and then tailor what needs to be done and what resources each individual needs after meeting with them. Here we navigate our patients from initial consult all the way through treatment, and this allows us to ensure that the burden is taken off of them. This also allows us to help them transition into survivorship once they've completed treatment. The services that we provide depends on the nutritional status in patients. The first step is to performance a malnutrition risk screening. If the patient doesn't eat well, he receives recipes, general recommendations, and tips to improve his clinical condition and his quality of life. I am available before, during, and after treatment to help patient and family to cope with radiation therapy and the secondary effects. My role as financial resource coordinator is twofold, basically. That is financially and uh, their insurance, particular plan that they may have. It is very overwhelming because the word copay, the word deductible, the word out of pocket is very confusing and complex to some. So I can reassure them, no matter what, we will work through this with you. We're here to be resourceful and compassionate at the same time. I have the capability of reviewing each and every insurance plan with them. I'm here to assist you, to walk with you, to hold your hand and accommodate you the best way that I can. And you will be taken care of. Patients are concerned about follow-up care. Once treatments are complete, what happens next? We are always here for you. Well, we will schedule follow-up appointments as deemed necessary. We will never lose sight of you or your process of recovery. The Ackerman Cancer Center team understands that your cancer puzzle can shift, sometimes in subtle and other times in significant ways. We will ensure that you are appropriately monitored after your cancer care.